Our next reader, uh, John Luca Perkovich, is a freshman statistics major with a soft spot for English. He enjoys playing D&D &D a lot. He'd like to go to graduate school to secure an MLS and JD, becoming the librarian. He always knew he was. So. Uh, howdy, my name is John Luca Perkovich, and I'll be reading a brief excerpt from a short story in Smoke. It's a little piece about and of fiction, I think. <clears throat> Writing. It's fairly simple, I think. This whole charade, exchanging information, printed or spoken, truly a fascinating thing, but the content within, well, you can't prove it, can you? Only the writer can speak the truth and know that what they speak is in fact the truth and not some convoluted lie. I can tell you all about my experiences as the Crown Prince of Wales, and all you can do is suspend your disbelief for a moment while I lie through my teeth. If you'll indulge me, I'd like to tell you the truth. Not the complete truth, mind you, uh, more of a sentimental lie. It's just you, me, and a pack of smokes. I probably should have mentioned the smokes, I just thought you might have made some assumptions is all. Let's talk about Lynn. Lynn's tall. Coming from me, that means a lot. She's full of laughs, and I'm certain has more to her than she appears. We had a chat outside her studio, no sculptures of bronze or iron about, just monuments of dirt and concrete. She didn't sit, I stood. Our eyes gazed around haphazardly, taken in nothing but the surroundings and ourselves. Hands working the pack in a lighter, hands working glasses in a coat, breathing in those noxious fumes, breathing in that cool Texas air, taking in her angled face, glasses red, shimmering in a multicolored hue, and taking in his disheveled countenance, hair wild, beard unkempt. I took a drag. So what you're saying, I continued, is that Satan and God were lovers. Yeah, she said. Why else would he try so hard to get back at him? Maybe he's the embodiment of all evil in the world. Doesn't seem like our ideas of love and shit should factor in. But it has to, she said. Why? Well, did God write the Bible? Didn't 12 dudes get possessed in a cave and write the Bible, I said. Does it matter? Guess not. Then you see my point, she said. No, Lynn, I don't. Okay, well, think of it like this. She paced around, I ashed a bit. If you were truly loved by him, her hands did this little odd motion in the air, a brief rain dance for logic, would he not accept you no matter what? Or even not grant you the ability to feel the hate you so truly feel for him? That would have to be romantic love. Nothing else comes close to that. What about hate, I said. What, she said. What about hate? Well, what about it? Can't we assume that nothing given to us was real? That these men thought above this heinous figure to represent all those thoughts of those men which would consume us into their wrathful flame, to lead us into a damnable pit of retribution, of sulfur and pain where nothing else exists, where all we have to look forward to is pain if we do not follow the holy white rules of some bearded man on his throne. Those lies kept to themselves in some kind of fever dream brought on by the spectral possession of rancid cave meat and some drunken claim to hear the third part of the Lord, that which does not exist in any righteous sense and which consumes nothing but the hatred of men. Is that not hate? Is that not why he exists in his prison where we are to join him? Burning and torturous freedom for all of eternity for the simple act of the insecurity of his existence. Is that not hate to you? I took another drag staring at her, awaiting his response. Well, I, I just mean like a toxic relationship, she said. I said, what? Like God is some kind of uber kinky dom, she sputtered out. <laughs> yeah, and he, uh, he kept Satan in a dog kennel over the weekend. <laughs> I laughed. Uh, Satan is, she chokes a bit on her tears, her cheeks high as a steeple, like trying to say the safe word, but he's, he's, her laughter overtakes her words. Mine joins her. He's got like a ball gag in, and he's trying to get something down, and it's just my laughter cuts out my own words, the struggle to hold my sick, keeping me upright. He's just like, wed, wed, wed. We both break into an uncontrollable fit of laughter, leaning in on each other, waking up the rest of the place in these moonlit hours. Finally, someone on my wavelength. She won't know, won't she? What hate truly is? I put out my sig, 
we went inside. Let's talk about Mark. Thank you.